do you try and try and try to make money at Stardew Valley, but it just seems like you can't ever make enough? Once you get past the early game, there is unlimited potential to make money and buy endgame items in this game, but getting there is a little bit difficult. If you're curious on some strategies that I use on how I make so much money in the mid to late game, then you're gonna wanna listen up because I have six tips for you and they're really gonna help you out. Also, before you tear me to shreds in the comments, I know that I am not the most optimal factory farming mega monster soulless money making machine, but I have a pretty good strategy on how to make money and while you can still enjoy the actual game, some people just strictly farm and do the most optimal farming techniques just to make as much money as possible, which is fine, but these tips are more in line with still playing the game as there are too many great aspects of the game to just ignore and honestly i'm all about having as much fun as possible when i play so i like to incorporate a bunch of different things into my everyday stardew valley however the things i focus on are the things that make me the most money so the last five tips are all very specific and I'm going to uh, give you numbers and calculations and things to think about. But this first one is a little bit more general and that's because I think it's really important to set you up for success and get really thinking about how you're going to get to the mid and late game. So my first tip for you is that all the systems in the game work together to start maximizing your profits. In the early game, you're just simply not going to have enough money just to power buy your way to all the things you need. So, for example, when you go mining for copper and iron ore, you turn them into bars. Then you craft those bars into a tapper which you put on the tree. Then you get oak resin from the tree to make a keg. And then you can finally put some of your fruit, vegetables, and other things into the keg to make a more profitable item. So I think some people just try to focus on farming because it's technically the most profitable thing you can do in Stardew Valley. However, in the early game, you definitely have way more time than you have energy. And so sometimes on a rainy day when your crops are already watered, there's literally nothing else to do. You might as well go spend the entire day in the mines getting items and ores and gems. If you focus on foraging, farming, mining, not only are you gonna level up your skills that are gonna unlock really useful crafting recipes, you're also gonna collect all the resources you need to start really diversifying your farm in terms of what items you're producing and that's going to allow you to get to those kegs much quicker and again i think the game is just much more enjoyable when you utilize all the mechanics that are in the game so i think that that is kind of my first tip for you that is going to put things into perspective so while you're kind of getting through that first year to two years make sure that you are really well diversified in all your skills spend some time in the mines and get yourself set up for the massive amounts of farming and artisan good production that you're about to do so let's move on to tip number two the greatest debate of all time ancient fruit versus star fruit so let's break it down so if you look at just the selling prices an iridium bottle of star fruit wine sells for 4500 gold whereas an ancient fruit bottle wine sells only for 3,300 gold. Same quality, much different price. However, the reason that people consider ancient fruit more profitable is because after you grow the ancient fruit plant, it regrows after every seven days and you don't have to replant, buy more seeds, so it just becomes more and more profitable. Whereas, star fruit takes almost twice as long to grow, it costs $400 every time you buy the seeds, and overall, it just ends up being more expensive. Now, this is where I think people falter. One thing about ancient fruit is it's all based on chance when you get your first one. So, as we probably know by now if you get your first one and donate it to the museum you get an actual crop that you can plant of the ancient fruit and from there you could grow it put it into a seed maker and start producing from there if you've already donated it grown it and then sold it for some reason and don't have the plant anymore well then you're gonna have to rely on the mines digging up artifact spots or the other ways that you can get ancient fruit to get going 
growing that crop. Starfruit still is very profitable, and yes, it's costly to get it going, but my strategy is to grow a lot of starfruit, and once you get your greenhouse all set up where you can reliably grow your ancient fruit, that's where I make the swap. As you can see here, I'm about to plant my first ancient fruit in the very corner of my greenhouse. Now, when this plant grows and harvests, I'm going to use that crop and put it into a seed maker and keep duplicating it until I have more and more and more ancient fruit, and then I will start slowly replacing my greenhouse. In the meantime, you can grow anything else in your greenhouse that is profitable, such as melon, pumpkin, cauliflower, star fruit, anything while you're kind of in the process because it does take a while to get your ancient fruit really rolling. With the 1.5 and 1.5 mobile update, there is definitely some more opportunity for ancient fruit as you can grow ancient fruit on Ginger Island. So you can slowly start to increase that space as well. However, personally, I like to stick with starfruit and other crops on Ginger Island because there's some quests that require you to grow a lot of crops, and I think it's nice to have a space that's not taken up by the ancient fruit because once you've grown the ancient fruit in a spot, it is really such a waste to ever take them down. So that is kind of my strategy because then you can have a little bit of both. So yes, Ancient fruit is technically the more profitable crop, but I think while you're playing, you should utilize both star fruit and ancient fruit and grow a ton of them. And then what you're going to do with them leads us into our next tip. And that is practice delayed gratification. That's actually just a really good life tip in general, but it is so tempting to do a big harvest and then immediately sell it because you immediately get that rush of money. It's really fun. And you know what? That's okay sometimes. However, the way you really start to see gains on your efforts that you put into your farm is by delaying the gratification of selling your crops immediately and doing something more profitable with each one. So let's use our friend, the star fruit as another example. It takes quite a while to even get access to a mass amount of star fruit. So we're already maybe a year or two years into the game. Then you're going to grow the star fruit in summer, which takes about 13 days to grow. Then from there, you put your star fruit into a keg, which takes another seven days to produce a bottle of wine. Then if you throw that bottle of wine in a cask in your cellar, you can leave it for another 56 days to produce an iridium quality bottle of wine. That is a lot of time and effort, and sometimes it feels like, is the payout worth it? But I can tell you, there was a lot of times where I was struggling to keep over, you know, a million to a million and a half gold. But when I started doing this optimization, when I finally started to see those returns, I was making millions and millions and millions of dollars, and then all of a sudden I had way too much money that I couldn't even possibly spend. But then I actually did spend it all because I discovered that there was the golden clock and things like that. And so I quickly used up a lot of that money. But the point is, if you just keep working and working and working on your farm, utilizing different avenues while you're waiting for these big ticket items to pay off, it will be so worth it. And then soon you will have so much money that you can use to design your farm, buy end game items, or anything else that you want to use your hard earned money on. All right, number four, this is a tip that's going to be more useful in the early to mid game, but it is use preserve jars as well as kegs. And here's why preserve jars and kegs use mostly different ingredients to craft. So while you are building up the supplies for your kegs, in the meantime, you can use preserve jars to supplement that artisan good income. There are a few items that are actually more profitable in preserve jars, one example being pumpkins and the other example being cabbage. I personally have gotten into a point in my game where I just save every single crop that I grow and then I use the most profitable things in all my kegs first and then things like fruit from my fruit trees in my greenhouse, cauliflower, melons, all of that stuff I'll save and put it into my preserve jars. Late game you can probably afford just to buy a massive amount of kegs but on the way there you probably will not be able to get enough resin and enough supplies to 
have those unlimited kegs. So preserve jar is another way to start ramping things up and having a shed full of preserve jars is never going to be a bad thing. Number five, utilize all space that is available for you. There's a lot of areas that are off your farm where no NPCs will walk. And so you can place things and they won't get destroyed, which is great. But aside from that, the space on your farm does have a finite number of utilizable space. And so once you're kind of done power farming and utilizing all your farming space, it will actually be more profitable to start building sheds and putting kegs or preserve jars or whatever else you're thinking of doing and putting those sheds instead of your farm space. So a shed will only take up 21 spaces on your farm and it will provide 67 of optimal space of kegs. And I'm going to show you a picture of what optimal looks like. Personally, I like to keep a chest in my sheds because I just find that it's way more time effective and less annoying to carry around a bunch of ancient fruit or other things that I want to put in my keg. So I like to just sacrifice one keg and put the chest in there just so that it's on hand. So it's kind of up to you, but in the ideal layout, there's 67 spaces. Now, if you upgrade the shed, you will actually have an optimization space of 137. So where you could only grow 21 crops outdoors on the space or put 21 kegs, you can now put 67 or 137, which is a huge benefit. The more effective space that you can utilize, the more production you can do, and then the more money you can make. All right, the last tip that's really gonna get you to make the most money possible, this one, is very annoying, but it truly is worthwhile to do if you have the patience for it. So when you go into your cellar to put all your wine into production, which as I mentioned before, takes 56 days, there is a layout, which means you can just quickly zoom around and put everything into the casks and then get out of there. If you craft some additional casts, you can actually do this, which you can see I did a little bit of this in this clip here, and I was just too annoyed by it to do it again. So I stopped and then that was the last time I ever did it. But if you fill in every single space with another cask, and then when you harvest, you just have to go and harvest the wine and then pick up the cask to make space to walk through, to pick up the rest of the wine, you can, you know, essentially increase the amount of casts by, I think it's like 35 or 40%, which is a lot. Since it is only once every 56 days, it's probably worth it to do it. But again, I just find it so annoying that I just decided I'll just take whatever profits I have. However, when I kind of tried doing that, I already had quite a few of the end game items. If I was going back and starting over, maybe I would do that because I would want the money sooner. So those are kind of my six tips for how to really start transitioning from the early game of Stardew Valley, where it's really hard to make a ton of money into the mid to late game where you can really ramp up that production and start making millions of dollars every season. Now, again, feel free to tear me to shreds in the comments, but I realize that there are a lot of different strategies and maybe there's some things that are a little bit more optimal, but I think that this really goes nicely with the flow of the game. And the thing I love about Stardew Valley is that you can use a lot of different strategies and and that is the cool thing. We can all, you know, learn from each other and find different ways to do things. And I'm excited to hear in the comments what things that you do that might be even better than what I'm doing here to make a lot of money. Probably going to do a couple more tips videos because I'm really enjoying making these. So let me know in the comments again what you want to see in the next one. I'll probably do some more beginner tips next because I've been starting some new farms and it's really fun to kind of go through the early game and find out how to get through that really tedious part of the game where you can't really do too much. So that's probably coming up. But if you like more tips like this, some advanced game strategies, I'll definitely make another video on that.